what's going on, it's your boy Brandon Burn. I'm just getting with you guys, I'm gonna bring another fun fact of history, man. It's something kind of short, um, a little bit. Before I really discuss the the fun fact of history, I knew there was a shooting, a mass shooting, um, in Nashville, I think Nashville, Tennessee, um, at a Waffle House, so. Uh, definitely, uh, want, definitely want to let that be known. I'm going to definitely put the link in the, um, in the description so you guys can check out, check out the story. Um, it's, a, it's a white male. Uh, right now they, they're, they're already branded it as a mental illness uh, that he have. Right now he's, he's still at large. Um, he killed four people, one to seven. Um, tonight at a Waffle House in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, right now he's that large. He he has an AR-15. Um, so you guys already know it's a serious situation. Um, his, his name is Travis from Rentler, Rentler, Rentlin. So um, definitely. Um, People in Tennessee, um, in the Nashville area, definitely be very careful, especially about uh, a lot of black people out there, definitely be careful. Um, he has a lot of ties to anti-government. Um, he has a tie, strong ties to the anti-gun, I mean, anti-government uh, movement. Um, he, they say he had an all-white connection, so he's definitely a white extremist. Um, so he's definitely part of those type of groups and stuff. So, um, I really haven't got information on the victim. So, but I'm definitely, well, hopefully they'll release more maybe sometime tomorrow. So, at least everybody know. Hopefully they, they, those victims are not black. Because if, if it is, then I, I have to call it what I see and that's a hate crime. Not just a terrorist hat, but that's a hate crime. But, but we'll see who's the victim of um, But, like I said, I'm going to put the link in the description and let you guys uh, uh, read it. Read the, uh, the story, the storyline, what's going on. Um, if I can get some more information, I'll definitely let everybody know that. Um, okay, then. Um, on the fun fact of history, I really want to discuss um, the ruling queen of Ethiopia, or I would say Kush. And that person um, is Empress Candace. And she was the uh, reigning empress of the Kush Empire. Now, her reign was between. Uh, three thirty, maybe three twenty-five to three forty BC. But what? But her the most significant that really catapulted Empress Candace into becoming the most. Um, she's the most um, most advanced female leader in modern time and ancient time. Um, she's actually done one of the greatest uh, female, women leaders. And she was, a, she was actually a general. She, she actually not just governed her kingdom and her empire, but she also lead, she also led the empire. She also led the military. So she's one of the greatest military minds ever. Uh, as being a woman, Still, 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 she's one of the greatest military moms. Um, to at that time, um, during three, it was around the 340, 350 uh, BC era, Alexander the Great of the Macedonian Empire, he was laying claim everywhere he go. Uh, the, the Macedonian Empire spread all the way into like Central Europe, all the way to some parts of uh, of, of, of near Central Asia, 
near Mongolian area, all the way down to India. Now, India is where he basically, he, he got sick. It was, it, was a, it was a failed, it was a failed deal. But he got, before he really took the campaign to India, he wanted to advance his, his conquest through Africa. Now, at the time, he did take the coastline of Abidjan. Um, as you know, one of the cities named after him, and so forth. So he he did take a little bit of Egypt from the coastline, but he wanted to take over Nubia and that part which you know is Kush. When word got back to Empress Candace, now this this all happened. This all when they when Empress Candace met with Alexander the Great. It was, uh, I don't know the date, but I know the time, the year. It was 332 B.C. When, actually, when he was um, basically at the time about to cross, uh, cross the Nile at the time. He was going to cross the Nile. And um, right before he about to cross the well, yeah, about to cross the Nile into Mer into Maria or basically Kush. That's when he was met with the Kush Empire, the Kush military, headed by Empress Candace. And she met him at the she basically met him right there at the at the border. And this was this was this lets you know how majestic and how how, how much of a powerful presence she stayed. Um, her military had elephants, uh, horses, they have a lot of foot soldiers, and she's sitting right there at the top on the other side of the Nile River waiting for him to cross Basically, into uh, into cuts. Now, no one, no one. We gave part. Now, Alexander the Great, you know, he is he's a military genius. He's a military genius. He he really don't run away from from a war. You know what I'm saying? He rarely run away from a war. And I felt from the campaign that happened in India. I think this was. This was the turning point of Alexander's uh, conquest campaign. Because before he went to before he went to Kush, he was in Europe and in, in, in the northern part of Central Asia, just conquering. So when he started, and he, I think he got a little cocky when he took a little bit. He took that strip of land from Asia. So I think he got a little cocky. And when he started coming down into Kush, that's where he, he met his match. He he, so he was he was so scared. A lot of people would say um, he wasn't scared. He was um, he wasn't scared. He was he was pretty much um, didn't want to he didn't really want to come to grip of losing uh, to a woman. No, he was scared. It wasn't just her being a woman. It was that, yeah, that was probably maybe on his mind, but it wasn't just because of his woman. She had, a, she, had a, she had a similar military might that he had that he did not expect them to have. And they were already prepared. When when Alexander the Great was attacking a lot of other areas and kingdoms and so far, he basically did it almost like undivided, unscheduled, basically catching off guard. This one he didn't catch off guard. They they actually waited for him to come. They they did they did not move. They did not make a single move. 
because she ordered. Not one move will be will be sought until they cross the border. So definitely that that saying with what Empress Candace said definitely was an everlasting impression in what military and how strategizing can lead to. And she was the top she was the top of it. Um, so definitely um, uh, definitely want to shut out Empress Candace and Kush, Ethiopia. Um, I know um, actually um, now after you know they, they actually replaced it. The real name is is, is, is Candace. Um, and you know, I, I told a lot of people the Candace word is the, the actual Ethiopian Kush life word of ruling queen or queen's mother or royal woman. It's got multiple, uh, multiple different types of meaning to it, but it still leads uh, pretty much in the same course. But uh, yeah, she was a, she was done one of the most greatest military mom world leaders in order and ancient times. Um, now, now the second part I want to really talk about is the banjo, and I know a lot of people want to know why I'm, I want to talk about the banjo, and you know I would tell people. You know, Africa, black people have an imprint in everything. You know, when you, when you, when you think about it, and, um, you know, human history is African history. So when you, when you think about that term and that saying, you have to know that African people were the first people. There were no other people besides African people. To, to lead and to evolve in a way and be very intellectual while doing it. So, you know, the banjo is, is a main staple of, like, bluegrass music. And that's, that's, a, that's a form of country music, but it's like an Appalachian. It's like, a, it's more upbeat. Uh, it's not really depressing. It's more, it's, it's an upbeat type of party, type of um, folk folk song, folk folklore, or country music. But it's not really technical country music. Um, but the but the banjo it was actually uh, derived from a Af similar African instruments during the 18th century. Uh, so it was, it basically came from a lot of African instruments, but also the banjo used to be a main instrument in old traditional uh, black music at that time as well. Uh, now the banjo and the fiddler is, is, is the actual uh, principal instrument of bluegrass and country music, but mainly bluegrass. Um, like I said, the banjo, without the banjo, the, 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 you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get the bluegrass, you wouldn't get the traditional Irish, traditional folklore songs, you wouldn't get uh, traditional folk, a lot of folklore songs not just ours, but other folklore songs, they derive from the, the, the sounds coming from the banjo. You know, so, the banjo, you know, but the thing, the thing I think the, the, the black eye was, it was part of the mystery shows during the early, the early teens, and the early 20s, 1910s and 1920s. So, it was it was kind of it was kind of rough, um, and that was kind of like the the, the the bad stigma of the instrument. But yeah, the instrument was really 
origin from African interest, uh, instruments that was that was basically strings uh, instruments. They're string based. So yeah, I mean um, that's that's the other part uh, of the shit I really want to talk as well. But it, it also the banjo been a mainstay for for almost over 150 years. You really want to go maybe more than that actually. Let's, let's go almost 200 years. The banjo been around for over 200 years. So, um, but a lot of people did never knew that the banjo was actually thought and might would have been um, a very mixed person driving it or playing it. So, I mean... So definitely, the, I think the role got reversed because at, at, at the beginning when the banjo was, was created, it was more the African or black people that was actually playing the instruments. So until it, it just it kind of eventually more. But but yeah, that's what I, that's really concludes uh, my fun fact of history. But I definitely will leave that uh, that link to the Nashville Waffle House shooting. So you guys can check that out. Um, if there's more information that, that come out, it probably will. I'll definitely we'll talk about that. I might just put that on my Instagram and let it be known and keep it moving. But, uh, but besides all that, um, yeah, like I said, man, I, I just uh, actually conclude my fun fact uh, share. And I'll hit you guys a little bit later. You guys uh, enjoy your day, okay? Or enjoy your night. Bye. Bye.